Today, I'm going through all of these racks and I have just dozens and dozens of different kinds of papers and pads and painting surfaces. And I did that in my home studio too. And so what I'm gonna do is just look for different kinds of papers and canvases. You see, I'm getting ready. It looks like a mess. I'm getting ready for this figure drawing quick sketch. So this is like um, that sort of brown paper that a lot of artists paint on. Um, I'm gonna put links. I'm gonna make a video about this on Patreon all about the different things I'm doing because I want to get tons of papers and pads together and I'm getting all of my art supplies together, different pastels, different kinds of drawing chalks, um, even oil sticks. So, and like all these, these types of like pencils that you can use with like watercolor. Oh my God, I have ton, oh, I inherited, a friend gave me tons of, let's see, I mean, I'm talking lots of these different kinds of oil sticks and they're in multiple different um, containers and I have to learn how to use them. So, oh, and I also have this stuff but I plan to really figure it all out and I wanna do a lot of quick portraits too. I'm gonna to time myself now that I'm free of my deadline. I'm gonna do lots of hour or at least really quick portraits, but I'm gonna get all of my stuff ready first. Tons of papers, boards, different surfaces and have them all ready and the sizes that I want because I have so many frames and at home, I probably have another 50 frames. I have frames all hidden back there. So I'm gonna do things for frames and especially small frames. That's what I'm doing today. I've been using this Liquitex clear gesso and it says sur surface preparation and I've just been using this kind of big flat brush. And so what I've decided to do is only prepare half. So I've done this nine by 12, this brown paper nine by 12 and this little six by eight. And I've tried it in the past to paint on this surface, but what it does is it creates almost like that a slight texture that you'd feel on a pastel paper. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to work with pastel or oil pastel on these. And then these I'm going to use water-based polyurethane um, because I like the color and stuff. And then some of them, I mean, I have, you see I have tons of the pads and some of them I might use like the pastel without any surface and see what that is like. But I'm just taking today to prepare a lot of surfaces. Um, and I'm also gonna look into a clear gesso that doesn't have any texture to it. See how it kind of, it kind of like goes on to where you see like a white and then it dries completely clear. So it just helps you see where your brush strokes are. I wanted to play around with toning a canvas with a very brilliant color. And I was looking through what I have and I noticed that I have this, what's it? Cinnabar green light. And it's a kind of a transparent color. It's from Rembrandt. And what I'm using is just this wide bristle brush because I love being able to like do that and be really thin. And I'm just using um, Gamsol. So no medium or anything. So I want you to see, so I just dip it in here and kind of just thinning it out. See, I'm just sort of thinning it out. I don't want it to be too runny I don't want it to just run off my cam my palette. So I have, I searched through old canvases that I have. So this is a way to experiment. I'm sure all of you might have some, you know, scraps 
And so I'm just, I don't exactly even know what canvas this is, but this can be used on anything. It can be used on maybe the Arches oil paper. It could be used on the Centurion. I would say make sure to don't use it on expensive stuff, okay? Like don't use this on the Raymar L64 or any of that super expensive, those boards. This had been rolled up and was in my studio for years. And it honestly, it I mean, I could tell that it had an oil base. I, I can feel it, I can tell it. It is somewhat of a portrait texture, but it's probably nothing that I would be all that excited to use. So I, I mean, this, this size is to me about an 18 by 24 and it's loose. I've just taped it to a board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scumble and put this tone on. So you see, I'm gonna, I want it to be thin, but not too thin. So you see how, okay. And the brush strokes don't mean anything to me. So this is just a way to kind of scumble and get the paint on. I also, I want you guys to notice that it's not really dripping. So if you use too much Gamsol, it's going to start dripping. And that's not what you want. And how you put on a tone is just practice. If it gets too slick in the beginning, then you just pat it down with a paper towel. So have some Viva, and you could easily just do this. You see, I'm just gently kind of patting it down. Like I said, the brush strokes don't mean anything to me. It's it's the color, which I love this sort of yellow green, but it's also the vibrancy. So having this kind of interesting green, this yellow kind of springy green, it might be fun to paint um, pinks, reds, violets, purples, you know, opposites. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry Okay, like I said, brush strokes don't really matter. I'm gonna just let this dry, probably like overnight or depending on humidity, but it should be dried by tomorrow. And then I'm going to cut it into smaller little canvases. I'm gonna take a tape measure and see, you know, maybe six, because I wanna do individual little portrait blockins and I want to have it be inexpensive to where I don't worry. I don't, I want to go into it with just an energy of experimentation. So that's what I used. I'm going to let that dry and then I will cut it after it dries. Look for old remnants. This I can tell is probably some kind of acrylic. This is um, an old Clausen's 13 portrait. It's a little bit more sturdy, so I had some remnants of that. I would say you can use museum board. You can use any sort of acid-free matte boards, any sort of thick papers, any sort of like even boards that say a multimedia on it, just go through your racks and use up stuff you already have, please. That's the only way you're gonna experiment. And I have a whole bunch of canvases at home. So I'm gonna bring those here and tone them different vibrant colors and we'll have fun. I've been going through my home studio also and this is just a small portion of the papers and pastels and oil pastels that I'm going to be experimenting with. So I'm just finding all of these old kind of scrap papers and charcoals and I even have, gosh, tons down there and I have some in that armoire. So remember these are the remnants of the stuff that we took out of Scott's studio. Still trying to get it back. Oh, I even have stuff over there. 
Still trying to get a lot of that stuff back into his studio slowly. This paper, I'm kind of excited about. My good friend, Stephanie Birdsall, I think had bought a lot of this French paper um, when she was in France. And um, so to me, this feels like a Bristol kind of all purpose. And this stuff is gorgeous. So um, what does this mean? Of course, I really can't read it, but it's for pastel. It's, uh, I think it says gray there, cotton. And it has, you won't be able to tell so much on the video, but it is a beautiful light green sage. And it, yeah, it has a watercolor paper texture and I can't wait to try pastels and stuff on it. I even have, she got me some other stuff that's really big too. I'm gonna try this, Strathmore Dry Media because it's really, it's a sturdy paper, so you can use maybe a little bit of water or stuff like that. I'm trying to just get together all the pastels, all the new pastels, pencils, blah, 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 kind of organize them and see how I can put them together so that when I go do these figure drawings or when I just even do my quick, like, um, some of these are so old. I mean, some of these I got from my dad, like, like when I was in school or when I was in my 20s. And then a lot of this stuff was given to me. Um, and I, I wanted to really give a shout out to, let's see, can I even open this? No. <laughs> um, not with one hand, I think. So um, these are like really nice pastels. And I got... Um, tons of the oil pastels unison i mean a lot from a good friend sarah deer who passed away years ago and when she passed away she pretty much let us come in and let's just say uh, i'm still using her stuff years and years and years later that's how generous she was i have a lot of this museum board that i polyurethane and some of this old um, stuff, like this is um, an art board. So it really could be have been for watercolor or charcoal. I started something on it, didn't like it. So then what I did was I just used some gray um, gesso and put it on that. And I'm gonna probably cut these down to maybe nine by 12s. I also wanted to show this stuff, this Canson Mai Tai's pastels. You see, so these are assortment of colors. And so like, say I'm gonna work on this, I'll try and use the opposite, right? So if you're working on a green, I'll use reds. If I'm working on warms, I'll use blues and grays. And that will be kind of fun. I used to always just deal with one color when I did figure drawing. And then Rembrandt, um, I am an ambassador for Rembrandt Royal Talons, and they sent me these papers. So this is um, light colors. So this is just a array. Oh my God, there's a black in there. There's just an array of like grays and pastels on the lighter side. So that will be fun to practice with. And then there's dark colors. So these are all probably just the same kind of grays and tones, but just slightly more on the darker grayscale. I am going to organize all of this stuff Make it so that when I start my quick little portraits or my figure drawing, I'm not discombobulated. I have them all set up and I can just grab them. And yeah, but I'm, I feel a little bit overwhelmed. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I definitely do. An oil painting primer. So this is the Winsor Newton oil painting primer. And I have a bunch of different brands. This one I just wanted to try. So any canvas or boards or anything, like even if you have painted on something, so you can see that there is a ghost of a painting on this canvas, but the canvas itself was still quite good. So I didn't need to, let's say, put on a tone to stop it from like sinking in. It was just so that when I painted on top of it, it kind of gave me a smooth, slick surface. But this canvas, I didn't think was gonna be very good. But you can use this stuff on anything. 
um, paintings you have painted on before and don't like. You can sand down a little bit. Well, anyways, I had this scrap and now I'm gonna be able to make two eight by tens. And I put it on yesterday and it's, it still needs time to dry. So I'm just going to put it down here for a while. And this green paper, this green board, I used some of that clear gesso that has the sandpaper effect, which I can use for pastel. It's not great for oil. Now what I'm gonna do is take a whole bunch of these and water-based polyurethane, and I, I got the satin. And I actually got one of these brushes, these like synthetic brushes that will have a nice, you know, these can be like throwaway. Now, since I bought these pads in Europe, they're going to have European sizes. This is a similar, it's kind of in between an eight by 10 and a nine by 12. Um, it's odd sized. So I know that I'm probably gonna have to cut whatever I do down on this to maybe an eight by 10, you know. Um, these look like six by eights, but I don't think they're, they're not exactly six by eight. So that's the issue. But I'm gonna have water-based polyurethane. I'm gonna do two to three coats on one side and definitely one coat on the other side. And this takes a while, you know, you're doing all kinds and then you have to let it dry, do another, let it dry, blah, 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 let it dry. And then once those are completely dry, you turn them over and you do the other side. And I, cause I want to just have tons ready, tons and tons of these ready so that when I'm doing little hour studies, I can just grab them or a little portrait or something. And so, okay, this, all these little rolled up. I cut some canvases yesterday that were now, I have six by eights, nine by twelves, eight by tens. Because they were rolled up, they look like this. I'm gonna flatten them out and then put a big board and some books and have those ready. Okay, look at all these pastel, pastel oil sticks. I got all of these from my friend, Sarah Deer. I mean, a good 90% and other, I mean, seriously, I got all of this from her and some of the older, older stuff I got from my dad. I want you to see all these hard drives and I even have thumb drives and all kinds of stuff. So what I've been doing for the last couple days is looking through photos and finding photos. Let me show you this. Finding photos that I can do easy, quick portraits on. So you see all of these and some of these paintings I've actually done before. Some of these are just portraits from live sessions that, you know, I just took from my spot where I was sitting. So it is, it's both. Um, they're all photos that I have taken, but if you do not have a library of photos that you can just do a quick little study of, I mean, it's okay to use, um, it's okay to use, uh, wait, all right, I'll let you see my face for a little while. I tend to just video like this and I never think that like you actually do want to see a human. Okay, so I've looked through dozens of files that I have of photos that I've painted in the past, model sessions I've been in from life, and you know, things that I've had in my archives. So I'm trying to find photos that even if I've done major paintings of them, I'm doing them again in a different way. So the whole plan of this is to think about vibrant colors, interesting colors, interesting combinations. So remember I showed you how I did that like blocking of that kind of yellow green background. And then you saw the, the papers that I'm going to tone. Well, there's other boards that you can use that are gray or different. You hear voices in my building. <laughs> um, and think about using maybe colors you've never used before. Try and think out of the box instead of just neutrals or grays or beiges or something. Um, think about blues, greens, you know, citron yellows, all these different things that when you use something that is a complement, then it creates an electricity immediately. So we get that electric energy of just that vibrancy of color. Okay, so my plan is to get tons and tons of little surfaces, canvas, watercolor board, pastel paper, um, things are going to be unsealed and sealed. 
what does it feel like to use um, you know either I'm going to start practicing with oil pastel I do know that there's limitations to that but I have so many of them and I mean why not see what it's like um, I've watched YouTube videos I'm gonna just practice on my own um, and then I also want to what I really want to do is go through all of my pastels and pick out because it's overwhelming you see how much I have um, a limit of five so I cannot use more than five colors so if I'm working on this green paper then I'm gonna be choosing warms right so um, which reds which oranges which pinks those type of things and I'm going to then choose like a little palette like a mini palette and um, five a variety of like uh, maybe you know a couple darks a medium and a light but nothing more than that and maybe you know maybe one pastel pencil or two pastel pencils but they have to be the exact same color as the pastel that I chose it's all planned so that things don't just get crazy and you start using colors and getting you know that you don't understand so I'm limiting things to almost slightly mono chromatic I mean does that work you know we're all kind of pinks and then if I'm working on an orange paper or a warm paper all different kinds of blues and greens but I'm limiting the actual material to five colors okay and I'll, I'll show you guys but I want to organize everything so that I can just pick it I can just have a pile of surfaces a pile of different pastels a pile of different oil pastels and I actually ordered yesterday just actual oil sticks now those are different and I'll talk a little bit about them and I've been watching YouTube videos on those too because I've never used these and I've had all of this stuff forever I've had it all forever um, so today I'm going to be sealing papers and organizing my pastels and I'm gonna do a portrait today it might be an hour I'm gonna choose a photo from that folder that I showed you and I might even do that same photo three, four, five times. Maybe different harmonies, maybe different papers, different surfaces. Um, once you get one good reference, there's no reason why you can't do it over and over again and just try and do it differently. So don't limit yourself to just once. Okay, I'm just checking in, letting you know what I'm doing. I feel a little bit like in limbo because my deadline was done for Maxwell Alexander so now I feel free in a way but that can be bad also because then you feel like you just sort of float or I mean I do need direction a little bit I don't like to just ha you know do things and not have a goal or a plan Sunday so today is Friday I'm gonna come down here tomorrow and do another portrait Sunday um, I'm actually going to be doing Scott's Sunday model session I never go there but we have such a good model I'm gonna go because I want to practice portraits mini portraits colorful portraits because I want to have a whole lesson plan for my Scottsdale Art School online class that's in February I'm really trying to think far in advance so this is exciting for me it gives me something to work towards you know if I didn't have this class in February who knows how hard I would work to organize all this stuff and think of a lesson plan, push myself. So it's win-win. I, I really like teaching online, I think, but we can go into that later. Okay, I'm telling you, this is what I'm doing. Yay! I hope you guys are, you know, having something fun to work today too. I got together some pretty pinks and they're Holbein, they're New Pastel, um, different, yes, yeah, so this is like an orange, a hot pink, kind of like a plum, New Pastel, kind of like a Terra Rosa, and this is a really strong red. This is one of those Holbein, and then this is, um, I just found this, I didn't even know I had this, I love this color. Um, Maison du Pastel. Henry Roche, and it's number 5398. And honest to God, I, someone must have given this to me. But I love this color. So, like I said, this is the only one I have. And these are some other, um, oh, who 
are these? Oh, it's Le Chirard. And that's probably, I don't know what that is. But anyway, so it's, I don't want you guys to get caught up with exact, exact, exact. It is the idea. Now the whole bind is a little bit slightly, I would say harder than this. This is a little bit softer. You can even see on this paper towel. See how it's just softer. Now, so you under, you have to get used to how do these work on, you know, on paper. And this new pastel, you know, is a little bit more chalky. This is a little bit more of like a hard pastel, so it doesn't rub as much. Well, anyway, so I took these two colors and I have that pretty, um, like it's sort of like a sage, sage gray paper. Now, this is the rougher side. I tend to work on the smoother side and I wanted to like do something different. It really, I wanted to be able to still see some of this like rougher dry brush look and I just chose one of the photos that I had in my file and I've done this before. It's a very simple basic front on you know light coming from above in the side very strong shadow. I just wanted to start off with this because I was, I was this is new for me this whole experience of doing this is kind of new so I wanted to do something that I have done in the past a little bit more of a comfort zone. So I started off with this light green, that softer one. And so you see against this paper, it has like a yellow, kind of a yellow look. And then on top of it, I use this Holbein, which is tiniest bit harder, but you see how you can get these good sharp, like once you break it in half, you can go in there and really kind of like do lines. The green one, you just won't be able to do, right? So something like this, no matter if I break it, I can maybe do somewhat of a line, but it's going to get, let's say it's going to round pretty fast. It's going, see, look at it, my fingers, look at that. That's crazy. So when you're experimenting, this is the whole idea, is that you just make these little sheets and do lots and lots of them. Try just warm and cool, opposites, see, and you know, try the soft over the hard, hard over the soft. Very simple, I'm gonna just keep these as simple as possible, nothing detailed, but I am having fun on my very first one. So we'll see how it goes. I'm home today and I'm trying to organize all of this. I feel so blessed, but I also feel like a hoarder, like somebody who doesn't know what to do, where to start. Um, this is every single brand, so I can't even go over it. But what I do want to do is organize from hard pastel to soft pastel, because that really will make a difference. And it's the same thing with your charcoal. Um, don't just see what I used to do is I would just take these little boxes or these little kind of plastic bins and I would start putting, you know, if I was working on a piece, I would just have all this different pastel and I would just keep it all together and not meaning if I chose some grays or browns or blues and I would just pick it up from different brands and start using it without a real plan. Um, but some of this stuff is harder and it's, you want to start off your pastels with that stuff. Like you know, these little sticks are harder. These sticks are harder. These are kind of medium, the new pastel. These are kind of harder. Um, you know, and definitely the pastel pencils would be something to start off with. Um, once you got to some of those, and especially this stuff, this handmade pastels, those are so soft that you don't want to start off a pastel like that. I also found a couple more of those oil pastels that I still have to figure out how to use and all that junk. But um, of course I have too much charcoal, more than I can ever use organizing my papers. I have a lot more drawing and pastel stuff, but yeah, no, I'm gonna organize it. That's what I'm gonna do. Good morning, Theo. Your favorite spot in the sun on my ironing board. <laughs> Just need to show, make everybody happy. Who doesn't want to see an adorable kitty? Yep, who doesn't? 
It is such the joys of life to see an adorable kitty. Yes. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah. This is what Theo loves to do. We call it swimming. It's such a fascinating thing, and he only does it on one side. And he loves doing it on our carpets. It's like this OCD type of thing, but he just loves it. Have a good day, baby boy. Oops. Bless you. Bless you. We're driving up to the studio where we're going to be painting today. This is at our friend um, David and Judy's house. And they built this studio to have art classes and invite friends over. We met David who um, owns the Germanton Art Gallery framing and winery in Germanton, North Carolina. Years and years ago, he had seen an article that was written about Scott, and in the article it said that we lived north of Winston-Salem and he reached out to us. And he had this place pretty much to house out of town artists, so whenever they would have a show, they could stay here. Here's Scott. We got here a little bit early. He does this every Sunday. This is the very first time that I'm doing this because I wanted Scott to have a studio session. Oh, so this is like a little TV room where David has put all the memorabilia from like, I guess they're really into race cars. They kind of are in North Carolina. They're really into basketball and they're really into, um, oh, here's a picture. This is a picture of David Simpson with Leon Russell. Leon is the white is the guy in the white beard, and David is the one to the right. Um, oh, well, that's a nice bush poster. Okay, look at that Bud Light. Mm, very sexy. <laughs> I wonder if they've ever even used this room. David used to uh, have race cars when he was oh, younger. Oh yeah, look at all these old Art of the West. Yeah. yeah okay. Because, yeah, David had a gallery, and so every year he'd have different shows. When Scott bought this for them because David had a stroke, and so that's also why Scott is doing this um, Sunday thing, so that people will actually come and hang out because David doesn't get out of the house much. And is this the chair that David sits in when he comes? Yes. He okay. That's for him. So downstairs they bring the other wheelchair there, and then he takes the lift up, yeah. and then gets in this chair. So there's north light right there, and fluorescence. So we brought this. Scott, you know, this is our model stand, and then Scott bought this smaller light. You've seen the other ones I have in my studio that are the old-fashioned ones. But this was bought from B and H, and then we have it on this kind of professional boom stand. You know, most people would just this attach so you, it to their ceiling. This way, so you don't have to have it in front yeah. of anybody. Yeah, I can yeah, do yeah. it out here. But you have this on this boom because it's our light, and this isn't our studio. Otherwise, right. you would definitely just put on some kind of hook or something on the ceiling. And attach it to the ceiling but the balls are painted sort of a dark olive green and that's what we all had we all learned this color from like david lafell maybe 20 30 years ago to have um these sort of dark olive walls because it looks so good against skin and he, there's like a little kitchenette a bathroom and a bedroom so in case a you know a visiting artist came like when he was having shows they could stay here and then almost use this as their studio too. And during COVID, um, right at the beginning of it, uh, a family, their trailer was destroyed by a storm. Mm. So they stayed here, lived here for a year while their trailer was- Oh my God, I see two of my quick sketches. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know he had these. That is so funny. So these are obviously really old quick sketches and I can tell just from the body that this is our old model. We used to, her name was Scarlett but we called her L. And these were done with like um, those General's chalks. They're very soft, those small little sticks. So that's sweet. I didn't even know that he had these. You know, it's not a perfect studio because there is a lot of light and I don't know if all of these switches are able to be turned on and off and stuff. 
but it's, it's a good space. I mean, obviously Scott does this every Sunday and these are our benches. So we brought these and Scott actually made all of these. Um, so I don't know if this is North Light right here. So if this was somebody's studio, they could put like a table like this and have still lifes or have a model be against this wall. But when you are doing a, you know, like a, a group that is like more than three, then you kind of move it into the middle of the road. Now these are some of Scott's quick sketches. Oh my God, you guys, this says 2003. So that's sort of like probably a chalk on paper and this is a charcoal. These, I can tell that mine and these two on the bottom are, are of elf. You can, you know, you get to know people's bodies. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that is that model that I loved. Her name was Sarah. And we did a lot of her. She was a student at School of the Arts in um, Winston-Salem. And I loved drawing and um, figure for her. She was great. It's really hard to find an excellent figure model one that just the poses just are so natural. All right, so I'm going to set up this and do a. Chair oh, Scott's trying to find a chair for me to sit because I'm delicate and sitting at these benches. I oh, see there's pillows. Sit on a pillow because otherwise it gets hard after a while. Okay, so I'm going to set up now. Just finished. So this is mine, and this is Scott's. We had a lot of fun. We talked a lot. I didn't film while we were doing it. I worked on that green paper. It's, I don't know how it's showing up. Probably too red. I really just I didn't use the green at all. Primarily these two. 